Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kudash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations, much love and respect to you, brothers out there pushing this word out in truth and sincerity. Now, <clears throat> um, yesterday we had camp, and uh, there was a particular individual, okay, an Ishmaelite that came by. And, um, you know, he was, he was basically coming with the, with the bait, you know, for the scriptures, you know, you know, the, the typical debate that these, um, <clears throat> that these Muslims have, you know, uh, the Quran is this, the Quran is that, and, uh, you know, well, the Bible has contradictions and way, way, way. So we were breaking out of different things that he thought was a contradiction, you know, so through the spirit and power of Yahweh, by Shib Yahweh Shai. And um, he got some understanding on certain things. But the thing is with him, right, and these people in general, is that they don't have faith. You know, they're very carnal minded. So they're looking for, oh, uh, how long is the carbon dating on the oldest dead, oldest dead sea scroll and, and the oldest, uh, you know, um, Bible uh, t uh, scroll and all these different things based upon this world, which really doesn't profit, which really, if you are um, a man of the Lord and if the Lord has given you the faith, you don't need those things. Okay. We don't need that. You know, it doesn't matter what these so-called scientists say. It doesn't matter what Esau says. We know that the words of this book are true. You understand? And what happens is it becomes a, an endless debate and, um, and really, it becomes unprofitable, man. It really becomes unprofitable. So, um, I'm going to read this. This is Hebrews 11 and verse 1. It says, Now faith is the, is the substance of the things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. All right? So, this is the evidence of things that you cannot prove, things that are not uh, visible in front of you. You see, the Lord didn't set it up where everything is able to be proven because this book is created as a stumbling block. All right? The Lord has purposely put things in here to stumble uh, so people can stumble on and fall. Particularly the, those that are not of the elect. And of course the heathen. You see? So they're not going to get it. They're not going to understand it. <clears throat> and that's another reason why you need a teacher. Because if, you don't, if you're not skilled in the word and, and you're not spiritually discerned in the word, you're going to stumble and fall. Okay? Let me get um, Hebrews, the fourth chapter. In the second verse, it reads, For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. You see that? So faith is, a, is the key ingredient of, to really understanding and believing in this truth. It's not about what evidence you can see. You see, these Edomites, a lot of these Edomites believe on the scriptures based upon the evidence that they've saw. Okay? You watch certain documentaries, they'll say, oh yeah, I believe because, you know, uh, my ar this archaeological find and whatever the case may be that ties up with the Bible. Because Esau is a carnal man. Alright? But we are a spiritual people. And the elect... Uh, above all is spiritual okay you got two-thirds of our people they're not spiritual okay they're not spiritual at all they don't know they don't know the, the, they don't believe this the, the words that we say because it's not in them to believe but at the same time our people are more spiritual than these heathen okay because they believe in the higher power they, they actually believe the bible is the correct book but a lot of them or most of them don't believe in the true breakdown okay which which really takes faith which really takes a, a spiritual man to really grasp it, okay? That's why it says the spiritual man uh, judges all things, but he himself is judged of no man, you know? <clears throat> because certain things are beyond, uh, you know, what you can see, you know? Beyond what you would call man's wisdom, which that's all these people have. 
All these people really have and all these people really understand is man's wisdom. What they can break down based upon Esau's science, which Esau's a liar. You can't trust what Esau says. Esau's a liar. Okay? You understand? There's an Edomite up there. He, he was mad. He came up. He was mad. All right? And he and he was, you know, he had the glasses. He looked like a complete clown. You know, he had the glasses. He had the, I think he had suspenders on. His pants pulled all the way up. A tip like a, like what they would call a nerdy Edomite. Right? But in this world, he seems like a wise guy. But this guy, the, these Edomites don't have faith. You know, the Lord hasn't given them faith. He hasn't given them understanding of, of, of true wisdom. You know, their understanding is all carnal. Okay. So I didn't expect him to understand in the first place. But does it matter whether he understands it or not? No, because guess what? He's an Edomite, right? So if he's an Edomite, it, what, what what benefit is, is the scriptures going to be for him? Or Ishmaelite or, or, or Hamite? What benefit is the scriptures to them? It's not beneficial. All right, and their spirit does not um, jive with this book. Okay, you understand? He was saying how he went, um, how he was looking up these different debates, dealing with uh, the Muslim versus the Christians. Well, let me read this scripture first, man. I'm going to speak on that in a second. This is Romans three and three. It says, "For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of the Most High without effect? The Most High forbid. Yea, let let the Most High be true." But every man a liar, as it is written, that that thou mightest be justified with, uh, by thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. You see that? So everything that the Heavenly Father wrote in this book is going to come to pass. You know, so we're going to be justified. They're not, okay? They're not. Let's get Habakkuk, the second chapter. And just because they believe doesn't mean the prophecies are going to stop. You see what I'm saying? This is Habakkuk 2 and 3. It says, For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but the end, but in the, at the end it shall speak. You see, now it's coming to pass. That's what it means. It's you can clearly see the, the prophecies are all coming to pass. And not lie, though it tarry, wait for it. Because it it will surely come, it will not tarry. You know? And I and I asked him, what prophet what prophecies does the Quran have? You know? Oh, oh well, it has it has prophet. Well, well, tell me some prophecies, man. You know, where's the prophecies on the uh, on on slavery? What's the prophecy on the, the end? What where is the the this digital system spoken about in the Quran? Where when is the when is there going to be a righteous rulership according to the Quran? It, does it speak about that? No, it doesn't, man. Because that that book is is a book of confusion. Because it, it was just put together basically to get them at them um, Ishmaelites out of the land of Is, uh, Israel. That's why it tells them that the land, the holy land, is Mecca, which makes absolutely no sense. Because even in the Quran, it tells you that the holy people are the Israelites, the chosen people are the Israelites. So why the hell would the land of uh, the holy land be um, Mecca and not the and not the land of Israel? You see that? So it's confusion. And we could have went all into it, but it really doesn't matter because no matter what we told this guy, <laughs> he wasn't about to turn and become an Israelite. You see, because his conscience was seared with a hot iron, you know, and and he's and he was, you know, he was probably a, 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 a Ishmaelite anyway, man. Could have been a Jake, but he, you know, probably an Ishmaelite, right? You see. But um, at the end of the day, like I said, man, this is for the elect. Okay, this is for the elect, and it, and it's for the um. The, the men of the Lord. Okay, and they're the only ones that are gonna get the full understanding of this book. Okay. Oh well, the scriptures tell you that in in uh, Revelation is that the new song, only the hundred and forty four thousand would know that new song. Okay. This is 1 Corinthians uh, 1 and verse 18. It says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of the Most High. You see? For it is written, I will destroy the, the wisdom of this of the world of the wise, excuse me. I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. 
Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not the Most High made foolish the, the wisdom of this world? And he has made it foolish. It, 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 and people are starting to figure out that it's, that it's nonsense. Okay, and he, he brought up carbon dating. Carbon dating is not accurate, man. Oh, uh, uh, right? So then I showed him that in Google, right? That, that it says that carbon dating is not accurate, you know? And then he brought up something else that said, oh, well, the modern carbon dated has uh, corrected the the problems of carbon. You know, so it's it's really a, a never-ending debate. And, and, and it, 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 be, it began to be grievous in the spirit. Although I found something else that said that even the... Um, the modern day carbon dating, right? Which was just they th that article that I found was just happened in what 2020. So they, they just in 2021 they just basically started to fix that so called according to them according to these Edomites the modern carbon dating, which they told you the, the carbon dating was completely accurate. So how do you know they're correct on this? You know, so it's just it's all nonsense. You understand what I'm saying? It's all nonsense. You know. But you get into that type of debate and it becomes unprofitable, man. And it really becomes grievous to the soul, you know, because I was really grieved in the spirit. I should have just went, you know, just went right back to the scriptures, man. Saying, what are you don't believe? Keep it moving, man. You understand? You, you could, you know, do that quickly, you know, for, you know, but, I, you know, if you continue on that too long, it, it really becomes grievous to the spirit. Because what you want to do is you really want to teach the scriptures, Okay. It says, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not the most high made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of the most high, the world by wisdom knew not the most high. It pleased the most high. Right? You see that? So by, by the wisdom of this world, you, they didn't know the most high. Okay? You see what I'm saying? They didn't have the true wisdom. It pleased the Most High by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. And we go out there and we preach and that's, that looks foolish to these people. All right. But trust me, the things that we say is going to come to pass. It doesn't matter what they say. You know, and we're confident in that. All right. This is 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 4. It says, And my speech and preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of of spirit and power, and that's what we display, the power of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of the, of men, but in the power of the Most High. And guess what? The reason why he came up to ask those questions, he stayed so long, even though he was with his girl, his girl had to go sit down. Why, why did he do that? Because he really felt power, all right? He really felt the power, and he really believed that we had the truth in the back of his mind, Okay? But he didn't want to leave on. Guess what? Because if he left that Muslim thing and became, <laughs> and you know, came and, and believed something else, guess what? His family's not going to be down with that. All right? Because that's their customs. You see what I'm saying to you? Just like Christianity. A lot of those Christians don't want to leave the Christian church, although they know they don't have the truth. Because that's part of their customs. That's part of, you know, the, the family tradition and, you know, what, are the, what is the church going to think of me? What is my family going to think of me? Well, that, 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 that's why the truth is not for them. The truth is for the elect of the nation of Israel, okay? Because we don't give, give a damn what these other people think, you know? This is 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 18. It says, let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, Right, whether he be a so called scientist, uh, uh, archaeologist, uh, a historian, whatever so called of this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. See, we had to shoot out all that garbage we had in our head, right? Empty out our head so that the Lord could put the pure knowledge into our minds. That's what happened. These people are not willing to do that, right? And that's because the Lord blocked them, because the Lord doesn't want them to get it. Okay, you, you know Isaiah 6 and 9. The Lord doesn't want certain people to understand this truth. Okay? For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with the Most High. For it is written, He taketh the wise in, in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. Okay? So anyways, the thoughts of the wise are... Uh, are vain, you know, and he was bringing vain thoughts to the camp, you see, vain thoughts that really just became grievous, you know, 
It's better when a brother comes up and he's actually asking uh, spiritual questions because that adds, you know, and, and, it, and it makes things more edifying. But then you, not to say it was, it's not edifying, but it becomes grievous to the spirit when you're teaching to have to go into the wisdom of this world too much, man. All right. So with that, Lord willing, uh, that was edifying to the spirit, uh, to to the elect. Okay, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Akakudash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations, much love and respect to you, brothers out there, pushing this word out in truth and sincerity. Shalom.